Hello everyone, I'm Tim from Tim's PC and I build custom PCs to suit anyone's needs or budget. Also live stream my builds and repairs for transparency and educational purposes. So if you'd like to get an awesome new PC and you'd like to see it get put together live, send me a message today. Okay, so tonight we're going to be building our first 4070 Ti. So might be a little bit late to the party here doing it tonight, but we'll get there, we'll get there. So, this PC here is, oh, this is for, this is for Travis. I don't think I've sent Travis a message. I'm just going to do that real quickly here. Should always do this before I start the live streams, but hey, nobody's perfect. Okay, sorry about that. We'll let Travis know that it's on tonight. So we'll go through the specs. It's a pretty it's a pretty straightforward build. So we got an i5 13600 KF. We've got an MSI B660M A Wi Fi motherboard. We've got the aforementioned RTX 4070 Ti, which is the you know 3D version. We've got a 32 gigabyte kit of Corsair memory. Got a one terabyte NVMe SSD. Got a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler from Corsair. A 750 watt power supply, and we're going to be putting it in a Thermaltake S200 case. So, very similar, very similar to the build from the other night, but Intel and a little bit less RGB, I guess. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Hey Richard, how you going? Good to have you with us. Um, so this this setup here, oh I can tell you that. So this one here was thirty thirty one ninety. So one thing we might do with this motherboard is because it's the B six sixty actually older than the CPU that we're going to be putting into it so we might go and update the BIOS B660M-A DDR4 yep so I'm going to chuck in a 12th gen Intel CPU for now. And so this CPU will be compatible with the existing BIOS. Very new BIOS, eh? 11th of January. Okay, very, very new. Um, ooh. So yeah, we're just going to use this older CPU just with the stock cooler here. 
not really worried about thermal paste or anything like that. It's just a temporary solution. Yeah, you won't have any delays with this one. It's like instant. Mm-hmm. But we're likely to have, you know how, you know how we have some issues with MSI sometimes, with the BIOS is not being recognised. So we might have a bit of that, a bit of that goodness with that. So I don't usually, that's why I don't usually use that. But whatever, I'm not too concerned. Do I sound concerned? Does my tone of voice, like, <laughs> convey concern? I don't think so. So I'll install the NVMe SSD. Like, we don't really need this at this stage. But we may as well just chuck it on there. And our screw. There we go. Okay, and so we've got our test power supply here. It's a thermal take GF1. It's a good quality power supply with a 10 year warranty. However, this is a warranty replacement. So this this power supply has actually actually died on me within the second year of owning it. But I got a brand new one, so so that was good. So the best thing about getting a um, a warranty claim is you get a new new device usually. And that can sometimes lead you to many many more years of ownership without worrying about it because usually you'll get a new warranty with that item i've had good luck you know with like fridges and freezers and things like that die and they've got like a long warranty and it's just like oh yeah i'll i'll, I'll take my new fridge oh you can't you can't um you can't provide um a replacement on my fridge because it's that old that you don't make them anymore oh sweet i get a new one very nice. Just what I wanted to hear. Go ahead and plug in the keyboard and mouse. We don't need any power to our graphics card because we've just got our GT710 here. The only thing I do need some power for is the power supply. Chuck that in, and all I need to do is just touch down on the power on pins to make it power up. And oh, might want to plug in my display cable to said graphics card. Alrighty, so just give it a second and we should be able to have our display up on the screen. Okay, maybe not. So 
power off and just power on just make sure that our graphics card's definitely mounted correctly there and we'll check the connection on your PC's end as well that's probably where our problem is yes Alrighty. Hang on a sec. It's found an old BIOS for this board, but not your BIOS. <laughs> What? I knew the, these sort of problems were get, was going to happen with it. Is what we're going to do. So I'm going to plug it in, go to the root directory, so the main, just the main page now on that SSD, sorry. What is it going to be in here? Okay, so made a few little changes there. Yeah, just skip. All right, so now it shouldn't be out of detect.
Yeah. Hey Darren, how you going? Good to have you with us. Mm. Ha, ah, nice. Yeah, Toowoomba's a nice little city. Mm. Fun fact about Toowoomba, it's the biggest inland city in Australia. The only one that's bigger is Canberra, but I don't think it's a fair comparison there because it's like the the capital city <laughs> of Australia. So, Tim. what's up? Thomas wants to know, have you built with any Z790 boards that you would recommend? Z790 boards that I'd recommend. Well, look, a motherboard is a motherboard's a motherboard, right? Like, you can get them with you can get them that look fancy and have the features that you want, but you know, they're all of a you know decent quality. You can't, you can't. This is the thing: the 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 minimum sort of specification list for a Z790 chipset board. Is such that you can't really build a shit Z790 motherboard. If not, it won't. It won't. It won't. Um, it won't comply with the the minimum specs from Intel. And yeah, I mean, so pick your pick your brand. Pick what you like. Pick a board that has the features that you want. If you if you're worried about compatibility or like potential problems and stuff like that. Just go and just go and do a Google search and have a look on Reddit and stuff. See whether people are posting issues that would concern you with a motherboard. Because you know every motherboard can have random compatibility issues with different things. It's not like it's not like um, it's not like it's not like if there's a major problem with a motherboard that that's it. It's just a shit motherboard. There's never any fixes for it. Because this BIOS update stuff that we're doing right now, this is how those fixes get applied. So, if there's a big problem with the board and and the like common hardware that you're going to put with it, usually the board makers are pretty onto that and they will address any issues with a BIOS update at some stage. Gateway to the West, yes, definitely. Definitely the gateway to the West. Although you can go down, you can go, you can take the the sneaky southern road towards Warwick, going through Main Range National Park. That's the other gateway to the West. But that's the gateway to the southwest, or I guess you could say the gateway to the south. The deep south. <laughs> Gundy's about as far south as it could possibly get in Queensland. Yeah, pretty much. Gundy and Coolangatta. Okay, so. We've got this new screen coming up now. I'm going to go and select a water cooler because that's what we're going to be installing. You are now choosing water cooler. <laughs> that's awesome. Yes. Yes. I think it's a little bit concerned because I've got an Intel stock cooler on this i3 with no thermal paste. So it's not, it's not, it's, it's running fine. It's not over temp or anything like that, but I think it knows that something's not quite right with the cooler that's on the CPU. <laughs> anyway, that's all we need to do at this stage on the motherboard. We can go and turn that off. And so this, this is the problem that you can have if you're, um, if you're trying to install a 13th gen CPU on a um, on an older motherboard like a, a B660 chipset which is technically compatible but you do have to do the BIOS update on it you have to make sure it's running the correct BIOS and depending on where you buy it you know you might be getting a board that's that's relatively new stock, or you might be getting a board that's been sitting around for like three to six months. 
Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's a motherboard. It's not like it's not like a packet of chips or a, a tub of yogurt or something like that. They don't go bad like that. But what what it means is if you buy if you get a board that's been at a retailer and they bought say they bought you know five thousand of these things at once or something like that, right? To get a good price on them, and that they might be selling that over the next six months. If thirteenth gen came out less than six months ago, then the boards that they bought are all going to have an older BIOS on them. So you're going to have to do that update that I did. And so that's that's where like building your own PC can become a real pain in the ass and end up like costing you a lot of time and, and effort and stuff like that. And sometimes it just makes sense to to bite the bullet and just pay to have your PC built for you because then all these little random problems are sort of taken care for you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's in Galpa. How good's that? That's where we used to that's where we used to live. So you they would have been they would have been my local by a long shot. Um if I was if I was up there. But yeah, go see go see the Scorptech guys. Um, I can't I can't think of the guy's name. Um, who's who's at the the main guy at the at the front desk. Um, but yeah, nice nice guys up there at Scorptech. I, I went I went and saw them pretty much not long not long after they opened. Like I think it, I don't think it was the first week. I think it was the second week. I went in to see them and I think I just picked up, I picked up a couple of 3080s, um, oh, 3080s were great when you could get them, right? <laughs> um, yeah, picked up a couple of 3080s from them, introduced myself and told them what I, what I do and stuff like that. I'm like, you know, I'm a little bit further away than, than, than I was, but you know, if you do need, if you do need extra help, you do need to refer a customer somewhere, you can refer me to someone trustworthy, etc. So yes good to have good to have a little bit more competition in the marketplace in in southeast queensland for computer parts and um what a what a what a nice glowing endorsement of the southeast queensland region by a company like scorptech to come and set up shop here good for you and go queensland yay all right yep Yeah, yeah, a bit of bit of fun, but I think we've 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 sort of we've sort of jumped over the main um, the main hurdle there, which was which was the BIOS version on on the motherboard. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So Scorptech Scorptech is a is definitely a, a reputable a reputable company to buy from. So I, I buy, I buy some stuff from, from Scorptech. I don't buy a huge amount of, from Scorptech. I can normally get, I can normally get some slightly better pricing, um, either wholesale or, um, or at Umart or a computer Alliance. I find it's really competitive around that Mount Cravat area. <laughs> like, Computer Alliance is always like going head to head with with UMart and stuff, and they they seem to have a few bloody fire sales from time to time, and I can get stuff cheaper there than than wholesale, you know, because they're they're playing around with big quantities that they're purchasing, and um, and yeah, they they go to war in terms of pricing. <laughs> I don't mind. It's better a better deal for my customers because. As you know, I don't I don't make money on PC parts. My my build fee is is basically instead of instead of charging people money on on parts, I just I just charge like a, a rate for for the build, which basically means that I'm 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 in line I'm in line with other companies, but I don't have to um, go through the hassle of holding a heap of stock on hand. You just gotta know you just gotta know where to where to buy where to buy from because it's not just about necessarily getting the cheapest parts it's about you know 
what the what the service is like for for warranty and stuff like that because if I offer if I offer warranties to all my customers for all for whatever the component says on the box so we use a power supply here with with a five-year warranty the customer gets a five-year warranty on that on that power supply so there's no none of that I don't have to worry about oh how long have I held on to these power supplies for for before I'm selling them or anything like that no no I can I can just I can just go ahead and say hey yep you get a five-year warranty on this power supply I bought it pretty much at the same time you bought your PC so none of that will be a problem I think that's better. I think that's that's more in line with what the consumer wants. But hey, some people don't like it. But you can't please everyone. Some people expect expect me to have like a you know, like a, a big list of pre-builds. I don't do that because I, I've never had any, had any dramas. Sorry, never had any, like, success. Only dramas when I've tried to list pre-built PCs. So, I don't know what it is. Because, like, I've got a lot of friends in the industry. I know I know what to do for, for pre-builds. I just haven't had any success really selling them. I guess the, the, the marketing and the customer that wants the, the cheap pre-builds, uh, uh, they're going elsewhere. And the people that my marketing attracts is more about custom builds. And that's why every PC is slightly different. We go through it with every, piece, every customer in a, in a consultation to work out exactly what you want. And we go from there. Yeah. Oh, don't, 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 don't get me, no, don't get me, don't, don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong when there's, when there's, when there's an opportunity to do that, yeah, but the thing that a lot of people don't understand if they're not in the industry is that this is high, all, all PC parts fluctuate in prices, so what happens, what happens is you can, you can be like, you can go and learn about the prices and everything that's going on in the market at, at the time that you, you know, go and make your purchase, for example. But whether that, whether something else is going to happen in six months time, you don't necessarily know. And when it comes to, when it comes to technology, um, basically you've got to consider it essentially age stock by the time you've been holding onto it for like two months, three months. That's a long time to be holding on to stock in this industry. So for someone like me, where I don't have employees, I'm not like running a production line, it becomes really, really hard to properly maintain an inventory. So some of the things that, that, I, that I do buy wholesale a lot of time is, is, is things like cases, power supplies and things like that. So when I can get a bulk deal on a common, um, a common form factor or something like that, I do try to do things like that, but it's not, um, yeah, it's not, it's not really something I, I go after too much because in terms of motherboards and CPUs and I mean, you can, the thing is you can traditionally, you can traditionally ride out the price cycles in when it comes to memory and storage because the two main buyers of memory and storage is the commercial industry. It's the enterprises like, you know, Google and YouTube and stuff. So they buy, they buy in bulk periodically. So there's like a, there's like an oscillating price cycle when it comes to memory and RAM. Problem is right now we've got some new technologies coming in to play with DDR5 memory and we've got new storage and the, the cost of the, the NAND flash chips going onto the storage devices and stuff, a lot of factors are, are going on right now. So I haven't, I, I haven't been really buying up on memory and RAM for probably a couple of years now. 
So just because I'm I'm a bit too I'm a bit too sketchy, and the deals the deals usually aren't aren't very good. Just to give you yeah, just to give you a few like little insights there, because it's not like you'll you'll probably you've probably seen like PC companies like small ones come and go over the years, and like stock is is a big killer for a lot of businesses. Like it's it's fine. Like I've had purchasing roles in the past and stuff like that, and it's fine when you're a big company and it's just like. Oh, you know, we're 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 not even we're buying massive, massive quantities of everything that we use, and we're not even holding it for more than like say four weeks. Everything that we buy is is gone, and, and you can you can you can you can be happy with that. But when it comes to custom PCs, everyone wants something slightly different. Everyone's got just a slightly different budget and and all that, and there's just too many options. It's the thing with the thing with pre-builds is about it's all about the cheapest with those specs. So people basically go from shop to shop to shop to shop and and see what specs they can get. You basically you're basically mixing like cheap Chinese parts where where possible and random brands that people don't know and you don't really list it. You don't really list the brand like you don't list the brand of the SSD or anything like that you just like oh yeah it's just got this you know and, and then and that's sort of that's sort of how you sell them because people aren't really looking for they're not really looking for quality they're not really looking for warranty and stuff like that they're just looking for the cheapest thing that they can find that's essentially what the pre-built market comes down to okay so everything around the back here is all ready to be hooked up We've got a micro ATX board in an ATX case. So what that means is we need to install a few extra offsets. So make sure you put your offsets in the correct place. If your board has, if your case, sorry, has um, has a different offset configuration put in place, get that sorted before you put the motherboard in. It's probably one of the more annoying things to, to forget about when you're building your PC is the, the offsets. Because once you have your board in and you plug everything else in and you notice that there's one offset that you missed, it'll be like, you'll always see it, but you'll likely not have the energy or motivation to um, pull your whole PC apart to pull the motherboard out just to put that one extra offset in. So it'll be definitely something that will piss you off over time. So get it, get that right. And then the other reason is obviously make sure you have it in the correct hole so it's not sticking in the back of, of your motherboard and causing something to short out. You know, motherboard designers are pretty good with not putting something crucial where that other offset will could come through if the end user gets it wrong, but it's not perfect. So, had a customer recently find that out the hard way. He'd been having a weird problem with it all year, and I didn't know what I didn't know what he was what was happening. I thought it was uh, based on what he was telling me. I thought his power switch was was dead, but no, it had to do with the fact that he forgot. Well, he put the he put the offset, or probably his son, I'd say, because I'll back up. He bought a PC from me, um, and the intention was he, he just wanted the parts, so I shipped him down like a build kit. And um, yeah, for for the price that I charged, also I also gave him um, free um, free like phone call assistance on Christmas Day because he's gonna build the PC with his son on Christmas Day is a bit of a bit of a fun thing to do, father and son. And so yeah that was all that was all good and he just had this weird problem. I thought it was the power switch in his case. So I'm like look it's just the power switch in the case. Um, you know when you're in Brisbane next maybe bring your PC in and I can I can replace that for you. 
and um, yeah, he brought it in, and yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't work out what was going on until until I until I'd noticed that there was no offset in the bottom hole of this board, and I was like, hmm, why are we missing an offset? Did they just forget to install the offset, or is the offset? actually sticking into the back of the motherboard here turns out yeah it was actually sitting in the back of the motherboard okay so we've got to get this cooler on much easier to install a cooler when the board is out of the bot out of the case can do it while it's in the case, it's just a bit more of a pain in the ass. Alright. So this is our standard Corsair Intel backplate. There we go. And here's the correct screws. And so with, with Corsair coolers, they come with pre-applied thermal compound, which is all you need. Be very wary of a salesman who's trying to sell you new thermal paste for your CPU. I mean, it's not quite the same, but it's kind of like those, you know, those fuel additives that you get at the at super cheap auto or something like that. You know, make your car bloody more efficient or something like that by adding this crap to your fuel tank you know it's uh, dubious claims and dubious dubious differences you know things that make you go hmm But yeah, it's definitely definitely an unpopular opinion. I'm sure there's plenty of, of thermal paste fans out there, but yeah. Fluffy Mao in a box. Cat in a box. Cat in a box. Cat in a box. Oh, it's all wet. <laughs> Cat in a box. Thermal thermal paste. Give it a bit of a press down like that. It should hold for you for a little bit and allow you enough time. Where are you hiding, bag of pellets? Give you enough time to get the offset and actually screw it down. One. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean I'm 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 all for I'm all for that kind of thing. I mean I mean my dad's from a different generation, right? And like he wouldn't be able to build he wouldn't have been able to build a computer with me when, when I was six. It wasn't really the sort of thing that amateurs amateurs built. So there was nothing there was, I, I I didn't get to go through that. I just got my I got a I got a cellar on 
the very first Celeron that came out, I got that, that CPU. On my 10th birthday, I was a very, very excited little boy there with my own computer. And they were just, my parents were just like, fucking finally, you can stop fucking around with ours and changing this and changing that. And he can fucking deal with his own shit. Yeah, yeah, no, well, I mean, that's, that's what I've always done, because, like, bef I've, I've always done PCs as a bit of a side thing, and if you know the story, it was with COVID that, that sort of boosted my business up to the point where I could, you know, pursue this full time, and so, so basically, I've always, always done custom PCs, always done a consultation with the customer before they bought the PC off me. That's why I'll have, you know, mainly good reviews from people, etc. Because it is a custom PC, so it's exactly what the customer wants. So it's kind of hard to fail at that, right? You know, if you if you go through and work out exactly what the customer wants, exactly what they need, etc. and you get it for them at a price that they that they want then you're going to get a, a good review from from that customer right that's just that's just simple that's simple stuff and so when i was just building pcs like on the side every single one was was a consultation and then a build it was a friend or family member and we sat down and we worked out what they wanted what made sense and how much money they they re realistically needed and wanted to spend for what they wanted to do and then we we went from there that's how that's how i've always done it and when i started advertising and making a facebook page for it as like a, a proper business i didn't see any reason to stop doing that so you know there's plenty of there's plenty of people out there um, you know, building pre-built PCs and stuff like that, and marketing them and stuff like that. I've got there's, there's some of my friends in the industry that I've, that I've met through COVID and, and all that. So I've got I've got no interest in trying to trying to like trying to be the next like um, Titan Tech or something like that. I got no interest in, in trying to do that. I don't think it's I don't think it works for the brand for Tim's PC. So if I wanted to do something like that and do pre-builds, I'd probably do it under a different brand. I'd do, I'd do completely, I'd redo the marketing completely for that, if that makes sense. Because it's sort of, it's a totally different thing. It doesn't really fit the, fit the brand for Tim's PC. It would be what I'd refer to as off-brand. So, yeah, not, not really, not really what I'm trying to go for here. Tim's PC is is fine as as a as a small a small thing building custom PCs and and doing repairs and stuff my local area and whatnot but doing PCs on a production line like out of a storage shed or something like that that that's something different I'd I'd have different marketing for that I, I'd, I'd redo my ads I'd redo I'd redo everything so I'd just do it under a totally different business name. Maybe I'd maybe I'd leverage Tim's PC name in, in that other business, you know, powered by Tim's PC or something something like that. What are you laughing at? <laughs> powered by Tim powered by Tim's PC. Okay, so that's how our radiator will, will sit in the case. So we don't have a rear fan. We don't. We don't really need a rear fan for this build, believe it or not. If we do, I'll, I'll chuck one in. But I don't believe that we do, and it would just add an extra moving part to the case. So I'm so confident that we'll that we'll run the cables for the AIO to the back, so they'll be pretty much right up next to that back fan. I'll have to move the radiator to install another fan, 
but I'm confident that it's not going to cause a problem. And yeah, like I said, um, it's just extra moving parts and extra point of failure. So sometimes, sometimes less fans is kind of more fans, if that makes sense. And the, the other note is, I think my voice is starting to go, is that these three fans on the front would are likely um, are likely lower RPM fans than these two stock Corsair fans that go on the cooler. And so these fans here will also be high static pressure fans, which are ideal for use on a radiator. So essentially these, these two fans here will move approximately what these three fans on the front will, will move. So the volume of cool out the top of the case through the radiator via these two fans and the other the third fan there if we installed one would kind of be just redundant from what we need in terms of the airflow dynamics of the case. So some people might, you know, if some people, in terms of their OCD, they can't help it. They just have to have something on there, and that's fine. Like, um, if if Travis wanted an extra fan on there, um, yeah, we can put one on there. It's no problems. I'll chuck in a black one for for free. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think, I don't think we're gonna need one in here. If you want an RGB one, I can also put an RGB one in there for for twenty dollars as well. So that's no problem either. But if if I if I remember the conversation, I don't think RGB was really a priority with this build. That's why the RAM is just plain black. Saved him probably ten dollars or something like that. It's not a big saving. It's not like it's not like RGB is you know it's becoming so common and so mainstream that it's it's like it's the mainstream option and you've got the economies of scale thing going on. So even though even though it's got it's like more technology, it's it ends up costing less or the same price as the as the other stuff just because they're making batteries for longer. Okay, so when we do a micro ATX board in an ATX case, we normally like to, to run some cables behind the actual motherboard. And the reason you do this is just so it, it looks neater. So some people really, really hate the look of cable, like lots of thin cables at the bottom sticking through. And if, if you're like that and, and you like it to look a bit neater and tidier, that's the best little trick that I can tell you right now. Tim? Yeah. Yeah. No, well well like like I said, like I said, if I was gonna go down the the like cheap pre built kind of route, um I'd probably start I'd probably do that under a different different brand name. Just because like I said just before I don't I don't feel that it's kind of on brand. For right. Tim's PC, if that makes oh. sense. What the hell is this? What? Signal out of range. Please adjust your resolution to the supported range. What? We haven't adjusted anything. 
go back, go back to PC and webcam. I think it might just be the the camera, the the cable into our our actual video camera that you're looking at me through. Anyway, yeah, we're back now. Hey, David, how you going? Good to have you with us. And yeah, no, definitely don't want to, definitely don't want to tarnish the, the Tim's PC brand. Um, I'm just going to be, I'm just going to be doing what I do. I'd like to get, I'd like to get busier. I'd like to, I'd like to be able to build some more PCs and stuff like that. So that'd be great. I'd love to get to the point where I don't have to advertise because yeah, like I can, I can, you know, I sort of need to advertise. If not, the you know people stop contacting me for new PC inquiries. Not completely, but like, now. you know, I can I can basically I can basically pay for a hundred messages in my inbox every week. But I've got to pay you know big bucks to Facebook for the privilege of that. And while while that makes sense for me right now, I'd love to get to the point where I wouldn't have to do that because it is very 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 expensive. It's it's prohibitively expensive for for some people. Oh, we seem to be pressing on the cable there. But yeah, there's an old guy, there's an old guy in the, in, in America, he's, he's down in Arizona, unless he's moved, and he, he kind of does some similar stuff to what I do. His name's Kerry Holzman, if you wanted to, wanted to see an older, um, more American flavour of Tim's PC, I guess you would say. Live Okay, so the only other thing that I've forgotten to install is our USB cable. Ooh, we should be able to 
get that power cable in there. It should. Like I've said before, probably my, the most the thing that I find the most frustrating about building a PC is is probably you know something something simple like hooking up the the CPU power just because. It's generally really tight up here after you chuck the radiator in. That's what's nice about doing a, a Leon Lee Dynamic 11, is that you got all this room. There's one. So dark. So I should have really chucked this in beforehand. But my fucking Australian Queensland, she'll be right, mate. Fucking attitude strikes again. There we go. See? No, I should be right, mate. I'll be able to get that in. Nearly cut my finger doing that. That would have been fun. Bloody hell. <laughs> Luckily our USB cable will not be as much of a pain in the ass as that. Because that just plugs in around the side here. It's just got a USB type B connection and then it just goes down to a standard internal USB 2 connector okay well that's kind of the hard part over now now it's just a case of hooking up all of our cables hard part depending on who you ask right You know, I, I get people, I get people all the time, you know, like, yeah, I just need the hard stuff done, mate. And, and I'll be like, okay, yeah, no worries. And they're like, yeah, so I've already built the PC. I just need the software done. And it's like, oh, oh, I thought you meant that as in like the actual building of the PC. Like, oh, no, 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 I'm good at that. Um, just hate software. Okay. Yeah, sweet. No worries. And then the exact opposite of that. 
Oh, I, I don't need you to install Windows, mate. I just want just want the PC put together. Blah 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 blah. I'm I'm more good for everything else. So yeah, hard part. Really depends who you ask. So we've got an internal control for our Corsair cooler. So we get these two fan connectors that, that come off it. So you do have a little CPU sensor cable that you can just plug into your CPU header. Or you can just not plug it in at all. So if you don't have it plugged in at all, at least on this brand of cooler, the cooler will still, the pump on the cooler will still actually work. It'll just be a case of you won't, you won't be able to see anything in your motherboard's BIOS, which may or may not be a concern to you. And so you can either plug that in to your motherboard's dedicated pump header, or you can plug it into the CPU header, it doesn't really matter. Um, the, the name pump header, or AIO pump header, or something like that on the motherboard, um, it's nothing special. It's just another fan header, it's just the name that it has. So when you go into BIOS, it'll say AIO header or pump header. Just FYI there. And so we got front panel audio. That can also just get slid down behind the motherboard there. And that just gets plugged in in the corner. We got our front panel connectors, so our case switches. It's nice when they're on a solid bit of cable like that and they don't get all stuck behind the board. Because as I said, this is this is generally the neatest way of hooking all this stuff up, especially when you've got a um, micro ATX board in a full size ATX case and some people complain that, they, that I do this so they, they're like you should never do that you should never use a micro ATX board in an ATX case and it's like yeah but what if I want to sell a customer a computer that they can upgrade at some point what if this isn't the final journey for the customer in terms of their PC in that case having the bigger case that's that's an advantage because you could it gives you more motherboard options if you want to upgrade in the future. Maybe they're not going to upgrade for like six years, and then they're looking at secondhand motherboards on you know marketplace, and they can only if they find a really good deal on ATX board. Oh damn, my case is too small. Not going to have that problem. Because it's one of the it's one of the two things your case and your power supply. These are two things that I definitely recommend you get right from the from the get go. Because everything else is relatively easy to swap out after the fact. You want to get those two things right. Because I mean, if you have to change them, it's like you've got to change everything else. Because you've got to unhook everything and and hook it up again. So it's like either way, if you change your power supply, it's like you're building a new PC. <laughs> You've got to unplug everything, every powered connection, and plug it back in again. You change the motherboard. Once again, it's like building a whole new PC, so you unplug everything, plug it all back in again. Change the case, same deal. You'll have to unplug everything and plug it all back in and put it all into the new case. So get those things right. And then if you have to upgrade your motherboard, you have to upgrade your CPU. Eh, yeah, it's, it's a little bit more work, but... 
as long as your case and your power supply is there, you won't be doing unnecessary work as such. Okay, so our other cables here are our PCIe cables. So we need them for our graphics card. And then we've got our SATA and Molex cables here. And so I just need, I just need one SATA cable for this. I don't think I've got anything else that's powered by SATA. No, just our pump. So you could cable tie these cables down, but I'm just gonna stick them away with the power supply there. There's plenty of room for them. And then if we wanna add any other storage devices or something like that later on, it's no dramas. You just pull those cables out and you can hook them all up. Okay, and then the final, the final one here to, to hook up will be our USB 3. Now, if they uh, they are if orientated it here on the side, this motherboard has USB-C, but I don't think we've got it in this actual case, which is fine. It's nice to have USB-C, but you know, a lot of the time, a lot of the time you you'll end up you'll end up having USB-C and you barely use it. I mean, I've got a motherboard that's got, you know, two USB-Cs on the back, and yeah, I still find that the the regular regular USB ports are like infinitely more um, infinitely more versatile, and I end up using them a lot more than um, yeah than the the USB-Cs, even though it's a, a nice to have. Yes, we, we have, Hang on. we've got it. No, we, no, 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 it's still in that thing again. Well. Are, are you seeing it in the YouTube screen though? People are asking to fix the thing, so. Should be fine now. No. Maybe I should just stop it. No, 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 no. Because we didn't do that last time. Yeah, go back to the email. We might need to get a new cable for that. Might be on its way out. It shouldn't be the camera itself and I doubt it's the capture card itself. Yeah, that's just me <laughs> fucking with it. You telling me it's still there? <laughs> Sorry, watching the delayed video on YouTube there. Seems to be good now. <laughs> Seems to be good now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, who knows? All the puppies have opened their eyes. Except for like one. So 
know by tomorrow they'll all have their eyes open. And you see it now. Jesus. And then they'll be running around being puppies. <laughs> oh. Not quite. They'll They're be not fumbling qu around being puppies. They'll be they'll be <laughs> they'll be a bit unco and a bit a bit weird for the first week of having their eyes open and then and then finally they'll start becoming more like dogs. Yeah, just the 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 grey the grey box, which is something weird because it's only it's only just started happening tonight. Yeah, I've never seen it do that before. Cause yeah, we're kind of we're kind of noobs when it comes to live streaming. We didn't, I didn't study this at you know freaking college. We started live streaming just because. A customer wanted me to take all these photos. I'm like, I'm not taking, I'm not stopping the build to take photos, man. How about a live stream? It? So that one there that we just plugged in, that's our RGB header. So uh, untangle all this a little bit. One untangled. And two untangled. And so I always I always say as a as a good as a good rule of thumb don't get your cables crossed. You can make almost any other mistake, you can have it look messy as all hell behind the back panel it doesn't all have to be you know tied down with 10 million cable ties in fact I recommend not doing that just makes it harder to work on after the fact so one thing one time I like to use cable ties is when we've got a whole heap of cables bunched together that are all like the same sort of cable so in this case here I've got a bunch of fan cables hooked up through a splitter cable and so there's three each of them based on the length of the cable it's going to be like sitting in the middle of our motherboard at the back here so if I just tie them down with a single cable tie if any of our fans on the front there die we just have one cable tie there to remove and we'll have another one when i hook up the rgb as well and then we won't have to unplug it from the motherboard here this cable that i'm going to run down here all we have to do is un unplug the dead fan from this bundle of cables here, plug in the new one and tie it back up. Or don't, I'm not your mum. Yeah, not many people do it. And as, as like I said to my, my dad, he was like, 
surely you're not you're not live streaming you actually building the PC. Then everyone will know how to build PCs. I said, Dad, there's this thing called YouTube and there's already like thousands and thousands of people building PCs on the internet. So if people want to learn, um, there's, there's plenty of other people they can look at without me doing anything. So I was like, basically people, people will respect that I, that I do it live and that will be a better sell point for me than trying to keep this all secret as to what the process is for building a PC. And he's like, oh yeah, I guess I'm like, yeah, I'm like, there's already, literally there's already thousands of videos about how to build a PC and stuff like that. So you don't, you don't really need me. People don't need me telling them how to build a PC to work it out online. Alrighty. And then we'll just do the same thing there for our bunch of RGB cables that are all daisy chained together like our fans. And then once again we'll just have these two cable ties to remove and replace if it comes time to replace those front fans, if one dies. Because typically included RGB fans with a case will only have a one year warranty. So just an FYI, it's always, it's always, um, it's always beneficial to, to make sure that you can um, easily replace those. Because while you can get some really good quality fans and stuff these days, it's not always the included fans with a case. Sometimes, sometimes they can be a little bit, a little bit crappy quality. Not saying that there's anything specifically wrong with with these fans. I just mean that overall, like when I've when I've actually when I've actually like sort of experienced it in the past. If I, if I buy a customer a fan and install RGB fans in their case, typically have a, have a um, you know, better success rate with them compared to the people who just buy cases with included RGB fans and then some of them sort of failing. But the thing is, the thing is they rarely, they rarely fail within that first year. But in terms of like the third and fourth year, yeah, you might have to replace a fan. Because one of the common things with fans, most people will be very aware of this, um, is the, the bearings start to like wear out the housing around them. And then you start hearing this horrible sort of like a, a grinding um Sounds like there's a piece of plastic or something like that stuck in your fan blades. And yeah, that, that, that noise will get old very, very, very quickly. Okay, so we've got all of our cables in place there. We've just got our RTX 4070 Ti. So this is, this is roughly a 3080, okay? So just to give you a bit of an idea about where it sits, it's a bit better than a 3080, because I think it, it'll have the Nvidia's new DLSS 3.0 technology. Wondering how the 4090 is just so much ahead of its Radeon competition at 4K. Well, DLSS 3.0 has a lot to do with that. Okay. And so, here is our card. 
looking very, very similar to a, a 3080 in terms of its size. And this was going to be called a, a 4080. But they decided against that at the last minute. They were going to have, they were going to have the 4080 and the the 40 they were gonna have they were gonna call one the 4080 16 gigabyte and one the 4080 12 gigabyte and then they decided to call this one the 4070 ti instead and so you, you can just imagine the memes right like let's see who you really are under here like <laughs> ghostbusters <laughs> you know what i'm talking about and, and people are like, yeah, 4070, let's see who you really are. And it's like 40, 80, 12 gigabyte. But hey, this is when the marketing team decide to do something different. Always talk about, you know, engineering team and the marketing team cut from two diff different pieces of cloth. Oh. Might want to release this panel at the back here. Because that's not going to allow me to slot the card in. So for our power here, we do have our, our new ATX 3.0 power connector. So it's what people, people refer to as the 12 pin connector. But I'll show you a little fun, tell you a little fun fact about the 12 pin connector, right? Okay, so what you can see there, these 12 pins at the front, they deceive you because there's also four pins there at the top. So this is actually a 16 pin connector. Just FYI, people are calling it a 12 because that's the, that's the main the main 12 pins that you see but it is technically a 16 pin connector and so we've got two eight pin normal cables that go into this so make sure your make sure your cable is is plugged firmly into the graphics card these adapter cables are fine to use it's no problem at all the issue that customers were having with their 4090s catching fire or something like that that is to do with this connector not being plugged in all the way and that's how the fire starts because yeah you definitely don't want your connector only plugged in part way that is not ideal at all all right so um these the only thing i don't like about these is they're a little bit awkward in terms of how you're gonna how you're gonna position them i think we'll probably might just might just hook them around like this and I might might use another cable tie out here on these just so they stay together right where I want them
and we will come up PCIe cables up the top here. Very good. And so we won't have an obstructed view of any of the writing down there. And we keep it nice and clean along the bottom. Because that's the one thing that, that looks untidy when you install a micro ATX in an ATX case. When you have all these cables sticking up from the bottom there. And it looks like a bit of a bit of a beginnings of a bird's nest at the bottom of your case. No, I think it looks a lot nicer like that and always generally like to have the, the power cables coming in from the top of a graphics card. Not only does it keep everything unobstructed and nice and clean underneath, it also provides a bit of extra hold for the graphics card and will sort of counteract any sagging or anything like that that might happen over time. Not that sagging's a, a big deal, I mean that's kind of the that's kind of the other other thing with PCs that's a bit of a bit of a snake oil product is the the graphics card side mount like they act like oh the you know the unscrupulous salesman will be like oh your cards bend mate you gotta you gotta have the you gotta have the freaking support bracket in there the bit that bends is this bit of aluminium at the end the card might bend you know, if it's held on a fucked up angle for years, yeah, but this is the bit that bends at first. If that's bent, take the card out, bend it back in shape, put it back in there, your card's not sagging anymore. So, all, all what I've found is all you need to do is just make sure the cables come up from the top there. It provides a bit of extra support down the other end. Shouldn't have any problems. Hell, but if it's, if it's a real problem, just get a bit of anything and stick it under the graphics card. It's free. <laughs> okay, so enough talking. That is our PC all ready to go. So we should have a bit of confidence now that it actually works. But it won't be like, it won't be like, um, it won't be like we've just turned it on and it's already sort of set up because we've got a different CPU in there. So what that'll mean is that it's going to act like it's the first time it's ever been turned on. So it'll take a little, a few extra seconds there to boot up. But the fact that we did that BIOS update on it. That means it's going to work properly with our new 5th gen CPU. And power on. Ooh, why are we, why are we red? It's alright. See, so like I said, nice and keep it nice and clean down the bottom there, and you won't have anything untidy about a micro ATX in an ATX case. And then you've got the luxury of having a bigger case, 
and a wider selection of motherboards in the future. Well, I haven't plugged in a graphics card display cable, so I don't think we're going to be seeing much without that. Just make sure that's plugged in on your end as well because you know how crappy our cables are. Yeah. Very good. So there we go, our 13th gen i5 13600KF. It's a 14 core 20 thread CPU. So it's an absolute monster. And all we need now is, is a Windows USB. I do want to activate our XMP profile. Okay. Okay. And yeah, don't worry about it being an i5 or something like that. It's no problems pairing a 13600KF, which is, like I said, a monster 14 core CPU. Whatever you know about like an i5 or an i3 from, you know, like 10 years ago, it's just not relevant anymore. A lot of people get concerned, they'll be like, well, is an i5 enough for this? And it's like, yes, yes dude, it is. Gaming is, is, isn't actually the most intensive thing you can do with a PC, usually. Yeah. Ah, yes, yes. So that's been a... That's yeah, a pretty good little build. I'm just excited to see what the 3070 Ti can do. Obviously, I do watch... Um, I do keep up to date with, with new products that get released and stuff like that. And I, I look through... I watch the, 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 um, the, the testing and stuff. I, one of the... If you want to go to the sort of places that I get my information from... 
you should check out a channel on YouTube called Hardware Unboxed. Now, Hardware Unboxed are not affiliated with me or anything like that. They, I don't even think they know who I am. Um, so when I recommend them, it's a it's a genuine recommendation. It's not something that, that I'm being paid to tell you or anything like that. I just think that they're Aussies, and while they do talk in terms of US dollars, um, I think their information is, is the best, and I've found that they haven't had any sort of like things that have pissed me off over the years. Some other people have just kind of like annoyed me with some of the things that they've promoted or said or ideas that they promoted. But hey, everyone's everyone's got their favourites that they like. Obviously Linus Tech Tips is a is a big one there. Jay's Two Cents is another one that that I that I follow along with Linus. But yeah, if I want detailed information on cards, motherboards, CPUs, and stuff like that, I'll watch through the Hardware Unboxed review. I find their in-depth coverage to be to be superior. Okay. So we just install Windows 10. Obviously, Windows 11 is is just a free upgrade from Windows 10. So you don't need a new Windows license or anything like that. If you have a valid Windows 10 license, it will convert into a Windows 11 license. At least that is the case now. Um, because Windows 10 is still a little bit more compatible. It's still what I recommend to most people. However, as time moves on, it will get more and more, um, it will get more and more, it'll get less compatible, is what I'm trying to say. And Windows 11 will become more and more compatible. We have an MSI motherboard. So if you've got an MSI motherboard and you're using Dragon Center, now's a good time to, to go and uninstall Dragon Center, say goodbye to the buggy mess, and um, download the new MSI Center from the Windows Store, which being from the actual Windows Store now is a lot less buggy. They had to make it not suck. That was the criteria. Microsoft's like... Yeah, you know, we're like a serious software company, so everything on the Windows Store has to, like, not suck completely. It can be crap, but it can't suck. <laughs> Here's the minimum standard. You need to exceed this to be on our store. <laughs> Dragon Center caused all sorts of problems. Had so much problems with that ad. So many problems, I should say. Yeah, ad. That's not the right word, Tim. <laughs> say the right word and then people will understand what you were saying. I'll make a good old man sitting there rambling. She laughed at me. She's not meant to laugh at me. <laughs> really? Alrighty. Um, better install some other software.
So I'll put down some custom desktop icons. You can make these yourself. These are just empty folders. Except for this PC shortcut. And we don't have anything else that we need from in there. Okay. So I'll set this up as a gaming PC. Google Chrome is still the world's number one web browser. It's basically the number one web browser in essentially every country in the world. Like, I think... I think maybe Greenland doesn't... It's not number one in Greenland. And, like, that's basically a big iceberg that's suspended on land. Kinda. The geologist will come up to me and go, Tim, eat your words! A glacier is not the same as an iceberg. And I do, I do understand that, that difference. But, my point is it's a big frozen wasteland, essentially. You can't really, you can't really, like, grow any food there. You can't run cattle there. You can't really do much with the land. Like, <laughs> If if you think if you think oh why don't we why don't we start mining in like Siberia? Have a look at what perm have a look at what cutting through permafrost does to modern machinery. Because permafrost is yeah. It's solid. I didn't realise how like actually quite solid. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 rock and water hybrid. It's got the strength of rock and water. To combined and then the rock doesn't shatter because the, the the ice is still frozen and it's still like really really cold where you where you are so it doesn't melt at all when you break into it or try to break into it so you can't really do anything with it. it's all frozen and stuff but everywhere else in the world Google Chrome number one web browser I don't get paid to install Google Chrome wish I did That'd be cool. But because it's number one, it's linked to the Google search engine, which everyone prefers usually. We we install Google Chrome. So I'm going to make a playlist where I go through what all these apps do in a bit more detail. Because most of them, most of what I install other than the gaming apps, um, doesn't really take up much, much space. And if it does take up a bit of space, it's something that's, that's quite, not necessarily essential, but quite handy to have on there. VLC is, is still the kind of Swiss army knife of media players. The best review of VLC that I've ever seen is, if VLC doesn't play it, it's a virus. I thought that was a perfect review of VLC media player and why everyone uses it. It's actually something that was born from Apple if I if I'm not mistaken so originally made for Apple now is the world's kinda like number one media player it does have some limitations um, but most users won't run into them if you do have uh, some sort of limitation with VLC that you're recognizing it doesn't do well with large playlists for example 
Um, there are various other um, apps that you can use. Usually, usually they're they're relatively cheap to to purchase, and that will give you more um, you know give you more options. Okay, that's all done. And so Windows Update will sort of install most drivers that you need, but there will usually be some other drivers here that you won't you won't get from um, Windows Update. And so some of this stuff here that we're installing, Windows would have already installed a driver. We might have a more up-to-date one here from MSI. Everything's saying not installed there, and that's because things that might have already been installed might not have been fully installed until we restart. <laughs> Goodbye to my audience in Greenland. Yeah, I know. I know, right? No, um, well, well, Greenland, I'm pretty sure, is is um, a province of Denmark. So it's, it makes sense that it's in Nordic, Nordic hands up there. I think if there's any people that know what to do with Greenland in the future, it's the Nords. So, there we go. I've said something nice about Greenland as well. No, there's... Uh, Greenland's, Greenland would be a great place to, to visit, like, or at least to do, like, a, a flyover of. But there's, like, a couple of random little... little, like, little ports and stuff like that around the edge, but it's got no significant population. Yeah, I'm sorry, Microsoft Edge. Um, you need to do a de you need to do a deal with Google. You need to jump into bed with Google. This is how you become the number one browser. Jump into bed with Google. Get rid of Bing. But no one wants Bing. Everyone wants Google. That's why Google Chrome is ahead of Google Edge. Sorry, Microsoft Edge. You call it Google Edge. <laughs> No, but honestly, that's that's why people use that's why people use Chrome and don't want to like change over to another browser is because the the Google search engine's integrated with it. Everyone prefers to go use Google search because it's the best search engine. Pulls up the most relative relevant results in the shortest amount of time. So, you know, you can't really go wrong with that. For, for the average person, Google is the standard search engine. So whatever browser works more seamlessly with that is what you want. Okay, so why why are the chipset drivers not installed? Let's let's just do the first restart. And we'll come back and have a look at that. 
I think I forgot to install Corsair IQ. Don't really need it, but if you want to adjust the, the fan speed of the fans on the radiator, you will need to install that app. Mal! Fluffy Mouse had a bath tonight. It was a little bit wet. He's had, he's had some fleas. Pull it down. He's had some, he's had some fleas. So he's been he scratching. He's tolerating because he wants some food. Yeah. Tin. Okay, so what I forgot to do? Oh, I turn off the annoying shit that starts up automatically. So some stuff doesn't really matter, it just comes on in the background. But usually, if something pops up automatically, you can turn it off from here in Task Manager from the Startup tab. If it's not listed in here, you'll have to go into the app to turn off the, the auto startup feature. So with that Microsoft Edge thing, if you if you scroll back in the video, I already put the Microsoft Edge app away. But the fact is it wasn't on the desktop after that first restart. So Microsoft automatically puts it back. That's how badly they want people to use Edge and not um, Google Chrome. It's a little bit sad, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, Microsoft, if you want a marketing tip from me, just ditch Bing, just ditch it, cut your, cut your losses and side with Google Chrome and you will take over the browser because nobody really cares about the browser. Some, you know, some, you know, browser nerds do, but fundamentally people are just like, oh yeah, Google Chrome's better with Google and it links in with Google search results. That's the one I'll use. That's all people care about. Okay. So that's all sorted. Um, what was the other one? MSI Center. Chipset drivers. <laughs> no, no. Most people, most people in in Denmark would would agree that Greenland's like basically nothing. Greenland is there like um. What's the name? What's the name? What's the name of Australia's um, the the island down like halfway between Tasmania and Antarctica where there's like nothing but penguins 
and seals. Oh, fuck. We were just looking at that the other day. I want to say Macquarie Island or something like that, but I don't think that's right. No, that doesn't sound right. But it's like that, it's pretty much uninhabited. And it's a lot smaller than it looks on most maps. Yeah, I don't know why that didn't install then. Heard Island. Heard Island, yeah, there should be another one though. No, like in between Tasmania and the South Pole. It's there is one. No, 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 there is one. Yes, is that it? Macquarie Island. Yeah, there we go. I was right. See, I'm, I'm geolog ge geographically, get the word out right, I'm geographically <laughs> knowledgeable. Please, 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 I want to be default. Well, pro tip on how to be default, and I've discussed it enough tonight, I think. <laughs> <laughs> There's one way to do that, Microsoft, and it's really, really simple. Google. You just got to side with Google search, and everyone will be like, "Ah, oh, sweet! I have got no reason to download Chrome." All right, so that should be fine. We should be right to go and run some benchmarks and stuff now. Let's see what this 4070 Ti can actually do. Oh, no, no, no. Look at this. Microsoft Basic Display Adapter. That's not right. And come over here. We don't have any graphics card drivers. Let's get some NVIDIA drivers then. GeForce, 40 Series, 4070 Ti. Let's let's get it. Let's get it going on. Alrighty, how how big's that file? Eight hundred and thirteen megabytes. That shouldn't be too bad. Fortunately we have we have relatively fast internet here. So it doesn't take too long to download. Seems like it's going a bit slower than normal tonight though, but... So I saw NBN Co is offering fiber to the premises updates, upgrades for people on fiber to the node. That's pretty big news. If it's true. Fibre to the node and fibre to the distribution point or fibre to the curb, a, aka fibre to the curb. And and so so basically the people with people with fibre to the curb, I mean it's just it's just a cable into the house, it's no problems. But fibre to the node, that's that's a big deal for a lot of people. All the people that hate NBN Co are the ones on Fibre to the Node and Fixed Wireless. Mm -hmm. So my parents are on Fibre to the Node. So they'll get they'll get faster internet now. Not that they need it really. They don't they don't fully they don't fully understand they don't fully understand how to utilize a connection. They don't really yeah, do much. Nah, they're they're in they're they're in their late 70s, man. That they're, they're, they're older. They're older, you know. They live, they live alright. They live alright. They've got a nice apartment up at Scarborough. It was great when they first moved there because they had this awesome view of the water. And now there's all these big apartment blocks going in in front of them. And they're like, our view's getting smaller. 
it's like, yeah, yeah, well, he's a, he's a straight back from the front. So, what do you expect? Okay. So, new graphics cards, you will need to usually go to NVIDIA's website for, for an update or you will have to download your drivers from, from GeForce Experience but you need to make an account for that so in my case I will just um, I will just go ahead and download the driver drivers direct what I'll do is downloads I'm gonna cut this and paste it So cut and paste of a file deletes it from its original location and puts a copy in the new location. So I don't need the driver sitting there on this customer's device, but I might use it again if we get another 4070 Ti come through. Okay. Now, we'll get 4070 Ti come up here. Now we can set up MSI Afterburner and we can run our benchmarks on it. I really need a drink, eh? My voice is sounding real raspy after talking for a while. That's why all the people on TV always have a drink. They've always got a little glass of water beside them and shit. As a kid, I used to watch them and be like, Man, is it like hot in these studios or something like that? Why the fuck do they need water? You know? I can be out riding my bike all day and only eat a drink of water like a couple of times a day. Why do they need fucking water inside a, a TV studio? Can't be the only one who grew up thinking that. Okay, so there it is, our RTX 4070 Ti, our 32 gigabytes of, oh, 3600 megahertz RAM, and our 14 core, 20 thread CPU. Look at that, an i5 with more power than the i9 from a few generations ago. Whether it's gaming or multi-core, absolutely smashes it. So yeah, never look at it, never look at PCs like cars, like the i9s of, of V8 and the, the i, i7s i of V6 and the i5s of four-cylinder and the i3s of four, a smaller four-cylinder and, or oh, maybe I should get this older i7 or i9 and that'll be better than... The, the modern i5 or something like that. That's just not how it works. Well, I mean, based on these heaven numbers just in the opening scene here, this looks like it's it's beating a 3090. Even even 3090 Ti kind of numbers. This just just at heaven anyway. Look at that, we've had up to, we've had over 700 in these first few scenes. So that's pretty good. That is pretty good, like in terms of the price performance on it, not bad. It's, it's, it's pretty much in line 
it's pretty much in line with the 3080 pricing of late. So it's a bit more than what a 3080 costs, but you're getting that extra performance, which is exactly what I said to um, the customer who's getting this PC. See, I think Travis, I think the story with Travis was he hit me up a little while ago and put together a quote with a 3080 in it. And now we can't buy the 3080s new. So I just did, we did the upgrade to the 3070 Ti. It's a bit better. Costs a little bit more, but it's, you're getting that extra performance as you can see here. Just skip back to a build with a 3080 in it to, to go and compare. But it's about $300 more than a 3080. And I would say that you're getting that $300 extra in performance in terms of the frames per second. Here's our temperatures looking. looking pretty good. This is absolutely smashing it, and and I, I I would pretty much put this down to that DLSS 3.0 working its magic. We need, I think we need to have a, oh, sorry Munchlax, I think we need to have a 4070 Ti box in the background. We can say goodbye to the Radeon 5500 XT, this was like the, I think it was the flagship from a little while ago for the Radeon cards. Sounds like there's something in there. Probably a box. No, there's something inside the box. Which is something awesome. inside the box? A piece of paper, maybe? It sounds harder. Sounds harder than a piece of paper? Oh, yeah. It's a lot of paper. It's a heap of papers. And a CD. Oh, and a CD. Oh, no, no, no. no? It's just a, oh, just just a thank you card. Oh. Like what your nan gives you. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for showing up to my birthday. Try to do an old lady voice. I know, I know. <laughs> but that's that's me. I'm I'm a I'm a man trying to do an old lady's voice. So we all sound like um yeah, we I all guess. sound like Monty Python. <laughs> I, I, I can't do I can't do an Elizabeth Holmes voice from Theranos, but you can do a brilliant one. Because you're a chick. If I do it, it just doesn't sound right. Yeah, no. So we do Valley here, Ultra Max anti-aliasing. So this is a more intensive benchmark. No, 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 no. That's that's definitely not wanted. It is now crushed. And the inside of And so yeah, Valley's a more intensive benchmark, even if we ran it on the same settings. So that's why the frame rate's a bit lower there. But this is still a really good, this is still an excellent frame rate here. This is, this is basically like a 1080p game that's, that's more intensive, like say Call of Duty, um, up on, up on absolute max settings. Like these benchmarks, they're not exactly like any particular game. 
it's just like a it's just a random a random sort of simulation of similar sorts of games I guess and yes my parents are coming over tomorrow to have a look at the puppies Christine's going to show her the, the puppy quickly. Oh, one. There is one puppy dog. He's shutting his eyes now because of the bright light. He's like, what the fuck, where am I? He's so cute. It's very pretty. And so, yes. So these 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 little dogs will, will will find a good home somewhere. Mum's a purebred, and and the the dad is a bull Arab cross, and yeah, dad's dad's an excellent guard dog. So they've got they got good guard dog genes and um, Mooney the the mum is a daughter of a, a champion. She's got she's purebred. She's got papers and stuff like that. This is an unintentional um, litter of puppies. Okay, so that was Valley there, and then the final one will be the 4K benchmark. And 4K is really where the 40 series sort of shines beyond its competition. So I wonder what sort of frame rate we can expect here with superposition on the optimized settings. Look at that, 
Okay. So, there was our test results. And so no temperature anomalies or anything like that. Nope. So our CPU, that can get up to get up to 100 degrees. And our graphics card there. Oh, where are we? Oh, our graphics card's not loaded. There we go. Well, I didn't witness any high temperatures on this. Maximum 69C. So, yeah, your, your PC is, isn't overheating. Some people get disturbed by the, the temperature numbers that they see. But a graphics card running between 60 and 70-ish degrees is not a problem. The GPU temp on a graphics card can go up to 83 degrees. Memory and hotspot up to 110 degrees. So this is well within tolerances. A CPU, as I said, it can get up to 100 degrees. And this brings us to the end of the night now. where we just run our stress test. Mm -hmm. So we'll go 1080p and 8x MSAA anti-aliasing. Turn off the overlay. And let's get everything going on over here. Oh. Set it up for a 90 minute run. hardware monitor open there in the background so this will get it pretty hot but that's exactly what it's designed to do we're gonna have a lot of wattage running through the system and same with the graphics card there we're basically fully utilizing the CPU while we're also running a, a 3D game on the graphics card. So it's designed to get this thing nice and toasty because if something's going to fail, usually it fails, you know, the first time you turn it on and use it intensively. So if I can do that first before I ship it to the customer, they've got a higher probability of not having any problems. You can't ever, you can't ever have a, a zero, a zero percentage fail rate, but you can do what you can to minimize it. And from my perspective, I don't have time for endless support calls. So yeah, I need to make sure that if I ship a PC out to a customer, that it's 95% definitely going to be fine. If that makes sense. But yes, well, I think that's probably where we'll leave it for tonight. And so tomorrow, tomorrow night, or at some stage tomorrow, we've got to deal with my old PC. So no one's bought my old PC. I thought I thought it would have sold. And so because it's because it hasn't sold, I'm going to be moving it all into a Leon Lee Dynamic 11 case because that should make it sell. <laughs> <laughs> let's hope so. Let's hope, let's hope so. I mean, what's, what's wrong with my PC? It's 3080. It's 3080, 12th Gen i7. There's nothing wrong with that. No worries. So, thanks everyone for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you all in the next video.